on March 3, 2019, a powerful complex of thunderstorms moved through the deep south and brought with it dozens of tornadoes. One of those tornadoes stood out from the rest, an EF4 that tracked through eastern Alabama, through Lee County, and tracked into western Georgia, killing 23 people. The tornado devastated the town of Beauregard in eastern Alabama, destroying many buildings on the southern side of the community. In this video, we will be discussing that tornado, the setup behind it, and the result of the outbreak. We will also take a look at how the community has recovered and how it looks five years later. Lee County is a county in southeastern Alabama. It is home to 170,000 people and is also home to Auburn, a major university in Alabama. It borders Georgia and is home to many unincorporated communities, one of them being Beauregard. Beauregard is an average small town in south central Lee County. It is home to 13,000 people and has a high school, junior high school, and an elementary school. It's your average town that you'd expect to find in the deep south. 2019 was a pretty quiet year up to this point, with less than 50 tornadoes being confirmed beforehand, with the strongest of those being an EF3 in Columbus, Mississippi. As the storm season approached, weather enthusiasts were eager to see what events would unfold in the coming season. March 3rd was a very well-forecasted event, with the first outline being issued four days prior on the 28th of February. Here's what the forecast looked like. A line of thunderstorms was to move through southern Alabama and Georgia, bringing with it the threat for damaging winds. The line would bring some potential for spin-ups, but the main potential for tornadoes was east of the line. Discrete supercells would form ahead, bringing the threat for strong tornadoes. On the day of, a low-pressure system set itself up in central Alabama, allowing dew points in the region to soar. Short waves were set up during the morning of, and temperatures were sitting in the mid-70s throughout the region. Wind shear values, as shown in these photographs, were at a concerningly high amount, with 350 to 400 joules per kilogram of storm relative helicity more than sufficient for producing strong tornadoes. There, however, was some uncertainty with instability as Cape values would stay relatively low, below 1,000 joules per kilogram. Regardless, the setup was capable of producing tornadoes and damaging winds. The Storm Prediction Center issued a tornado watch at 11.25 a.m., indicating a very elevated risk for significant tornadoes, and the stage was set. The tornado that would eventually go on to track for almost 70 miles initially touched down in Macon County and began moving northeast. For the first few minutes of its life, it was weak and stayed over forested areas, producing mainly EF0 to EF1 level damage. The tornado began to strengthen as it moved northeast, producing EF2 damage to trees. As the tornado began to enter more populated areas, it abruptly strengthened, producing EF3 to EF4 level damage to homes. Onlookers witnessed the rain-wrapped wedge tornado behind lines of trees as it entered populated areas. Many residents had their homes completely destroyed by the tornado, with images showing houses completely leveled and swept off of their foundations. Seeing the severity of the situation, the National Weather Service in Birmingham upgraded the tornado warning to a particularly dangerous situation, or PDS, tornado warning, indicating that a confirmed large and dangerous tornado was on the ground. It's here where the first few fatalities from the tornado occurred, as three people were killed in their homes. A young couple, both 22 years old, would lose their lives as the tornado roared through at EF4 intensity. As the tornado continued northeast, it continued to intensify, producing more violent damage. The Stenson family, a family of seven connected through marriage, would take shelter in their homes. Tragically, all seven of them were among the victims of this tornado as they were all killed. The neighborhoods south of Beauregard were devastated as well-anchored homes would be swept clean off of their foundations. Trees would be debarked, Vehicles would be mangled and tossed, and many more would lose their lives. It was at this time when the National Weather Service made their final upgrade from a PDS tornado warning to a tornado emergency just two minutes after the first upgrade. Tornado emergencies are only issued if there is confirmation of a large, violent tornado on the ground producing catastrophic damage with great threat to human life, which can be confirmed via spotters or radar. The Storm Prediction Center at this time also issued a rare mesogamma mesoscale discussion, confirming that an intense tornado was on the ground and was to continue for a long time. This is a rare form of discussion that is only issued during significant events. As the tornado moved east, it weakened slightly but still produced EF3 damage for quite some time. All of the fatalities from this tornado occurred in Lee County, with all 23 victims losing their lives in the county. More significant damage would occur to homes and businesses in eastern Lee County. Many businesses would be impacted by the tornado in the Smith Station area, and a cell tower would be collapsed by the tornado. The tornado would then cross into Georgia into Muskogee County. A tornado emergency would be issued by the National Weather Service in Peachtree City, seeing the danger of the tornado. 
Most of the area that the tornado covered in Muskogee County was rural, and it didn't impact many structures, but a cell tower station would be impacted at EF3 intensity before the tornado would leave the county and cross into Harris County. For the time that the tornado was in the county, it too stayed over mainly rural areas, impacting very few structures. As the tornado crossed into Talbot County, still at EF3 intensity, it would impact homes, producing significant damage and collapsing most walls and homes. One family recalls being on a trip when the tornado hit their home, and when they returned, their home and vehicles were gone. Who knows, the trip to New Orleans may have saved their lives. Miraculously, no fatalities would occur while this tornado was in Georgia, and finally, after being on the ground for 68 miles, the tornado would lift in Talbot County. The result of the tornado was complete destruction of many communities, 23 fatalities, and almost 100 other injuries. The population of Beauregard remained close to the same despite the tornado. This is Google Earth imagery, and it's obvious that something happened as there's a scar around where the tornado went through. This was taken just a few days after the tornado, and this imagery confirms just how strong this tornado was. In total on the 3rd, over 40 tornadoes touched down, none of them being considered either strong or violent. Over 180 storm reports were submitted, 80 of those being tornado reports. $190 million in damage was the result of the tornadoes. It's been five years since this tornado, and the community has been rebuilding since. Those from surrounding areas have come together to help the Lee County residents recover, and a storm shelter was built in Beauregard with the memorial for the 23 victims of the tornado. Residents hope to never have to use it, but in case of another potential disaster, they are well prepared. Before I end this video, I would like to thank you all for watching. This took a lot of time and work, so I appreciate you watching until the end. If you at all found this enjoyable or informative, please consider subscribing, as it would mean a lot to me. Also, I have linked down in the description a lot of sources that have a lot of good information on the tornado if you would like to learn more. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later on MediaCube.